If you live in Texas, you are constantly reminded that it is election season because the ruling Republican Party is in a constant race to the bottom. Look no further than the guy in charge of the state, Greg Abbott. Governor Abbott has been on a tear lately. He successfully banned abortion after six weeks and put bounties on women, banned books that make white Texans uncomfortable, and hunted down parents of trans kids. This week, having pulled a full DeSantis in his race to be crowned as the king of bigotry among Republican governors, good old Greg decided to intentionally delay cross-border food deliveries by adding redundant security inspections, snarling trucker traffic for miles. The move is so bonkers that I'm just going to leave it to Paul, a patriot Texan, according to his TikTok bio, to explain it to y'all. Right now, Governor Abbott here in the state of Texas is forcing the DPS, which is our version of the state troopers, to stop every single truck coming out of Mexico, every single truck, and do a safety inspection on it, safety inspection on it. What they're doing is they're backing up shipping for dozens and dozens and dozens of miles. Why? Because they want to drive up inflation. They think it's going to help them in the midterms. Abbott literally sabotaged $150 million worth of food and triggered an economic crisis that jacked up food prices even further, hurting Americans just to prove that he's a hardcore Republican. The move was so stupid that the American Trucking Association called it holy flaw a wholly flawed scheme. The worst part is that his attorney general, Ken Paxson, who, by the way, is still under indictment for federal felony securities fraud and under investigation by the FBI, basically admitted that they intentionally sabotaged the economy for political gain. And late this afternoon, Abbott repealed his traffic clogging border action because it got out. I'm joined now by the Democratic nominee for governor of Texas, former Congressman Beto O'Rourke. And, you know, thank you always for being here. Really appreciate uh, you coming on on this Friday. It is so cynical. I don't think there's anything more cynical than forcing Texans who've already been through storms and already been through, you know, whether it's freezing or fires, who have an electric grid that barely works, who have already been suffering over the last several years, to say, I'm going to jack up your food prices and food prices in the region just so I can run on inflation. Sickening. Your thoughts. There's only one person that this helped, and that was Greg Abbott, politically in the short term, on one cable network. For everyone else, this has been terrible. It's sending prices through the roof, spiking inflation even higher in the state of Texas. It's causing massive supply chain problems. So it's the produce that you talked about. Two-thirds of the fresh produce that we consume in Texas comes from Mexico. And over the last week, it has literally been rotting in the backs of those trucks. So this weekend, when we go to the supermarket, there is not going to be anything on the shelves in the produce section. It is exacerbating supply chain problems for the electronics, the TVs, the parts to the Toyota trucks that are made here in Texas. He is tanking the Texas economy with what he's doing at the border. And the worst part about all of this is we gained nothing from a security or safety perspective. These DPS troopers providing these additional inspections can only check the pressure and the tires and the quality of the engine. They're literally not allowed to go into the cargo hold. That inspection is already done by Customs and Border Protection. So this was a purely political stunt that has done deep damage, not just to the Texas economy, but to the national economy. Ray Perryman of the Perryman Group estimates that it's done $1 billion in damage to the national economy every day it's gone on, $470 million of damage to the Texas economy alone. And do, are people getting the message of why? The, I mean, to me, it's sort of counterintuitive. Normally, governors want to show, look how I've served you. Look how I've helped you. What he's basically doing is, look how bad the economy is. Blame Biden and vote for me, which is such a counterintuitive, weird, circular way to try to win re-election. But I wonder, you know, I used to work in local news. Is this all the local news? Do people understand why they're paying more? They do. I was just in the Rio Grande Valley in far Texas, for example, which with the far Reynosa Bridge, imports the lion's share of that produce. You better believe in the Rio Grande Valley, in South Texas, in Laredo, every single person in those communities, because their economy depends on cross-border trade, knows what Greg Abbott has done. He's killing their businesses right now. They are seeing some companies move to Nogales, Arizona, a 20-hour drive away, 1,200 miles distant from the Rio Grande Valley. Um, you know it here in El Paso, uh, where I live, 
Uh, you see it throughout the rest of Texas because our largest trading partner in this state is the country of Mexico. 600,000 jobs in Texas alone depend on this. And it's not just me talking about this. It is the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal. It is other statewide elected Republican officials like Sid Miller, who's the commissioner of agriculture here, talking about this horrible stunt that is deeply harming the Texas economy. It's really everyone. Um, again, the mm -hmm. only beneficiary, and, and maybe just on Fox News, has been yeah. Greg Abbott. For everyone else, this has been deeply harmful. It's higher inflation, higher prices, more supply chain problems, and it's killing businesses, especially along the Texas side of the Texas-Mexico border, and everyone here knows about it. Yeah. I mean, they're trying to make a national anti-Biden, anti-Mexican point uh, and killing your own state's uh, consumers and citizens is, is bonkers. Uh, one other question, quick turn here. Um, the woman who was charged, the Texas woman who was charged with murder after an abortion, the charges have now been dropped, but that has sent shockwaves throughout this country because it, it exposes the lie that these anti-abortion forces don't mean to punish women. Is 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 that getting through when you're talking with female voters, with women, um, how much danger they're in because of these laws like the anti-abortion law in Texas? This is Greg Abbott's Texas, and it is coming to the rest of America unless we stop him and defeat him in November. In Star County in the Rio Grande Valley, yes, this woman spent two days in jail for an abortion that is legal for the last 49 years in this country. Thankfully, charges were dropped. But while he is pursuing this war on women, this fixation on transgender kids, we have real problems in Texas, like a foster care system where 100 kids in the custody and care of the state of Texas died last year, just one year alone. That problem within Child Protective Services has been getting worse year after year under Greg Abbott's watch. This guy cannot keep the lights on. He cannot keep the economy going. He cannot keep us safe. He's very bad for Texas, bad for the country. We must stop him and win this election in November. Texas definitely deserves better. It's a beautiful state. It definitely deserves better. Uh, former Congressman Beto O'Rourke, best of luck to you. Thank you so much and have a great weekend.